Hey, yo, what's up, Skrida Nation, Mr. Nation, and to my players, welcome to the Nafu Podcast. Episode number 15, I am here with Atingosi Liyama Chago. We are coming at you live at the blog. If you want to use this podcasting studios, you can send your email at admin at labtronicsol.com. Today's topic, um, we're going to be talking about mental health, um, mental illness. Um, Liema is going to be sharing his uh, experience with mental illness, um, depression, stress, anxiety, um, and also being admitted into a mental health facility. Um, Onjan. Greetings, beautiful people. My name is Atengo Siman. Atengo Siman na Liemi Kaya Bubbles Chago. Um, how am I doing? <sighs> um, it's been a tough week, but I am I'm pushing. Yeah. Okay. okay. So um, I, 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 I don't wanna. I don't wanna. We have tried this episode before, <laughs> um, but low chilling keeps low chilling. So, um, but I, um, I think we should, I, I want to start from the beginning. All right. Um, because what, uh, do you know the definition of a mental illness? The definition of a mental illness? Um, I wouldn't say I know the exact definition, but I know that there's there's different sorts of mental illnesses like depression, anxiety, ADHD, bipolar, schizophrenia. Like there's so many different illnesses out there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think. Okay. Um, when does everything start for you regarding um, this? Um, because I remember you said you were a bubbly child, yeah. um, but later on you 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 got to realize that this was actually a mask. This you being bubbly was actually a mask of what you actually feel inside. So when 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 when, when does all of this start? All right. So um, I used to, I, I I was born in Tanzania, but then I moved to Kunubi. Um, when I was around eight years old, which was where I got the nickname Bubbles because of how bubbly I was. Okay. Um, you know how they say sadness, it's it's okay to have sad days, but um, it's, it's you, you need to go, you need to do something about it when it becomes a norm. Like when you're like sad for like, like a week straight and you're just facing sadness, you know? Sure. So that was when I realized that I'm starting to lose myself, you know? First of all, I'm an, uh, I overthink, okay. okay? So around 15, I, which was like 2019, um, I was just like, I started to not want to be around people and I was crying myself to sleep and I was feeling as if I was a burden and feeling like I wasn't enough and just feeding my mind with all of these things that aren't really true. Yeah. Okay. So is that, are you aware when you're crying yourself to sleep that um, whatever that you're thinking is not true or? So at like when it's happening at that present moment, it, it, it feels real. It feels like it's, it's, it's true. But then when you actually like later on when you when you like write it down or say I, I write my, 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 my feelings down or whenever I'm sad I, I write down. So later on when I read them I just like I disagree because that's not how it actually is. You know, that's that's what my mind is telling me at that time when I'm going through something and I'm feeling sad. Okay. So before then, did anything happen to you? Like before you started crying yourself to sleep, did anything um, happen to you uh, emotionally or physically? Or it just happened, you just realized maybe after a couple of days that no, this is actually happening. All right. So um, I wouldn't say something specific happened, but I just started feeling sad and I was just um not myself and i was feeling numb and everything 
but then again, later on, um, like the it started the previous year, like when I was fourteen in twenty eighteen, at the, like the end of that year. Um, the next year in twenty nineteen, uh, I happened to experience about like four deaths in one year, and that just made everything just like so much worse. And I just, I I fell more into that sadness, you know. So it just became like a norm, and I was just like. Um, I was, that was, that was when I was just like feeling like I shouldn't be feeling this way, but at the same time I'm feeling this way. So I was also feeling guilty of the fact that I'm feeling this way, but it also felt like I couldn't control it, you know? So, um, yeah. Um, so those deaths, um, so in April of 2019, I happened to lose, um, a friend of mine who was also going through depression and we spoke about every like we 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 spoke every now and then, and I think two weeks before he passed, I saw him at the at the shop and I hugged him, and he looked totally fine. And I was just like, I'm so happy to see you. Hi, gave him a hug. And then two weeks later, I figured um, I'd learned that he had um, committed suicide. So that just like it 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 crashed me to be honest, because I was like thinking that I thought that we he was okay. And the last time I had seen him, he was, he, he didn't look like he wasn't okay. And so that, 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 yeah, that, that dented me, that, that left a dent for sure. Um, and then the next month I happened to lose like a little boy that was very precious. Um, that meant so much to me in a car accident. And in September of that same year, I lost my grandpa. Then in December, excuse me, um, my uncle passed away also in a car accident. So I think it was grief and sadness. It was the grief and the sadness together. So it became so overwhelming that it just felt like I was, you know, I don't know. It just felt like I wasn't going to make it. Yeah. Okay. Um. Then in 2020, um, my parents decided that um, I should go for therapy for the grieving. So I went for like a few sessions, but then, you know, not all therapists, um, there's different, like that therapist didn't work out for me. Like he didn't really, like he didn't, he, I, I, I understood the whole like process of grieving. He taught me that and everything, but he, it felt like he aided that part of me that wasn't okay, which was the grieving. But then the sadness, he didn't really, like the depression, he didn't really touch bases on it or like educate me anything related to that. And so it continued. Yeah. So you were able to deal with the grief. Yes. But then the sadness. Still continued, yeah. That was there. with you before, before the, 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 the death. The, the, yeah. the, 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 okay, sure. And then um, you move from him or after how long? I remember you said you also, you, you felt numb. Yeah. And yeah. then you started cutting yourself. Oh, yeah. So what, what happens when you, what, what happens when you feel numb? Like, you, you, what do you want to feel that you are not feeling when you feel numb? All right. So there's a quote that actually says, emptiness is so heavy to carry, which... I felt like I resonated with that quote so much at that time. So it's like, it's like you're feeling everything at the same time, yet at the same time you're not feeling like, it's like when you feel numb, it's like you're not connected to yourself anymore and you're not you anymore. That, or or um, since I mentioned that um, I'm an overthinker, I think a lot, so... The feeling of numbness came when um, all I could think about was it was neg negative thoughts. It was I don't want to be here anymore. I I feel like I'm a burden. I feel like I'm not worth it. I feel like people around me don't love me, even though that wasn't true at all. But I still fed myself those thoughts. So I felt numb, and I I got to a point where I wanted to I wanted a solution for that, which was self harm, and that I thought me feeling numb emotionally um, 
self-harming could maybe give me a feeling of being alive by you know doing something to myself of which i i self i self-harmed on my wrists and i i it didn't last i didn't really get what i wanted what i thought i would get um so but you did it again <laughs> crazy enough i did um the first time i did it i was actually at school and the bell rang as i was slitting my wrist and um i panicked because it wouldn't stop bleeding i just opened the tap and i just it wouldn't stop bleeding and so i went to a teacher i told the teacher i showed her she she, she got me to the 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 office and i got like banded and everything and then she asked me if everything's okay and then she took me to the youth pastor i went to a christian school so she took me to the youth pastor and he just asking me what's going on is everything okay and they 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 told my mom my mom was concerned she was like what can i do and i just since i feel like i felt like at the time that i was a burden i just i just told everyone around me that i was okay and me um seeking for help at that time felt as though i was going to be um like worrying them with having to get me the help that i need and so i just acted out as if i was okay and i just made it as though i'm fine for them not to worry about me so yeah and then um so you took me to to 2020 ne yes that's when the that's when you had to, you were dealing with the thingy with with the grief in 2020 yes but the sadness continued yes so what's happening in the head when you're sad like what what um also you overthink ne yes. yeah yes. which which is which is the biggest contributor yes. to your sadness yes so like for example you would think umhlambi um scenarios that are not there sometimes yes okay yes. someone's reaction could um you could interpret it in a different in way a, or than it actually yes. is yes. regardless of how close you are with this person yes. regardless of how much you know that they love you yes. they yeah yeah and then um are you aware okay so now you go to the therapist are you aware with when everything is happening are you aware with this is happening like um when you're dealing with the sadness when you're dealing with 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 with, with depression with grief Are you aware that when I feel these things I'm actually experiencing grief or I'm actually experiencing depression and so on? Everything. Um so I'm very self-aware so plus I overthink so I guess um at the beginning I didn't really know but as time passed I realized that depression was what it was it, and anxiety also but i only learned it was anxiety at a later stage in my life when they actually diagnosed me with it so but with the depression i knew yeah so what's happening with with anxiety what what, what are you feeling what's what, what what's happening inside when you when you, and, yeah so how can i explain anxiety anxiety is like it's like feeling like everyone is all eyes are on you and everyone's going to have something to say and you just i don't know like when i'm anxious i just feel like i just feel like people are looking at me and they're going to say something or they're going to do this and that or whatsoever and so i just like shake and i just like become nervous it's like being nervous all the time basically okay so when does the are you, so now when you when obviously you grow most from that 15 year old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you still a bubbly person or you after you experience all these episodes you just change completely? All right, so there was a stage in my life where I was um I lost touch to myself which part of myself is being bubbly. I I I did I did lose um that bubbly side of me, but I I think it's safe to say I through through the 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 hope that i got i managed to gain myself and my 
myself back, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're still a bubbly person. Yeah. Today. Yeah. I mean. Did they say it's possible that you're gonna lose yourself again? I mean, it's not like a, a, a handwritten book of how things are gonna go. You don't know what's going to happen, or you can't predict what the person is going to do to you. And I learned that um, depression is like it's like it doesn't have a what's what's the word I can use? It doesn't have a like they can't tell you what's dep people experience depression differently, so they can't tell you that this and this and this and this is gonna happen. So um, yeah. Okay. Um, and then um, at this point, 2021, you, are, you have not, you're just going to a um, thingy to, to yeah. A, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You have not yet been admitted. No, no, no yeah. So this, this, the admission happens in 2023. Or this year. Yes. <laughs> okay. So what happens, um, let's say maybe you're admitted Friday. Okay. What's happening Monday? In Monday your, in, as in, in like in the previous week or the week? The week leading to the Friday. Okay. Yeah. So okay. what are you feeling? What are you experiencing that Friday was the last straw for you to get admitted there? All right. That's a good question because um, for me, I started experiencing. Okay. No. The beginning of this year, 2023, I felt like um, I needed to to to. It was a point in my life where I felt like it's either I need to open up and tell my parents what I'm actually feeling or I actually just kick the bucket and I just, you know, escape. Um, but um, I just, I spoke to my dad and I was like, I'm experiencing this. He didn't understand at first because obviously, I mean, you were like, you're like a black dad and you're not, quite educated on this but my dad is very understanding and he's very open-minded and willing to learn I, I spoke to him I told him everything and he was like all right um I'll get you someone here at work, at work to speak to you I spoke to the lady over the phone for about three weeks um and then she suggested that I go to my GP and get a, a referral to a psychologist I then went to the psychologist this was around May, March, March, this this year. Year. yeah, yeah, March 2023. I go to the psychologist. Um, she's like, Okay, I think we need to see a psychiatrist. Psychiatrist comes through, she um diagnoses me with <laughs> anxiety and depression on the spot. And I think she could see that I was anxious on that spot because I was shaking. All I could do, like, all you could see was just me just trembling. Sure. And so um, the psychiatrist says, um, I think what would be best for you would be a, an admission into St. Mark's. And at that very moment, I was scared. I can't lie. I was, I was very scared because I am, um, people have this like negative thing around. Stigma. There's, yes. there's a stigma yes. attached to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm like thinking in my head, oh, what are people going to say? But at the same time, I'm like, as I've grown, I've learned that it's not always about people. It's about no. me and what's best for me. Yeah. Um, I went home, told my mom. She told me everything's going to be okay. And we waited for about two, three weeks for um, availability at St. Mark's. And then um, I went in. Whew. Um, I went into St. Mark's. Um, but just before I went into St. Mark's, the psychiatrist had given me um, antidepressants and sleeping meds and also um, medication for anxiety to help control it. And um, I went in. Um, obviously, first day, I was like scared what's going on, what's happening, you know, not knowing what type of place I'm going into. Then I went and um, I learned a lot. I learned so much. It was so. I don't think I would have been here if I hadn't gone into St. Mark's, to be honest. 
because they taught me so much. We went to classes. I was in the depression and anxiety class. They taught me so much on how the brain works and what you're experiencing when you're going through like depressive episodes and coping mechanisms and stuff like that. And then the second week, I <laughs> actually they said I should go to the addiction group because I have an addiction to I had an addiction to caffeine and prescription medication, you know, because I would take pills just to sleep because I don't want to think and I don't want to, you know. So I, I went there and I learned about the damage, the damage that it does and all of that. And so it was actually a, a great experience. <laughs> um, it was very good for my mental health. It was very helpful. It, it, I grew in so many ways. And although like it's 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 not like me going there is going to stop the depression it's just teaching you how to deal with it like cope with yeah when in, in situations like that so what, what what are some of the coping mechanisms that they said that um, this is what you can do um writing is one of them uh like writing your thoughts yes when you when you you're not feeling good yeah when you're feeling overwhelmed and feeling like the world is against you and yeah you writing is one of them the other one is um breathing exercises okay the other one is um what's the other one <laughs> the other one <laughs> So the ones that you like, the ones that you actually yeah, yeah, do, yeah. is the breathing and the writing. Yes. And they work. They do work, yes. What are, what are some of the, I don't know if they, they told you there, but what are some of the coping mechanisms that are not healthy to when you feel away? Like when you medicate, what are some of the things that you, 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 you do that are not medication? All right, so... Um, these are actually things that I've done, which is drinking, like um, drinking just to like escape from the the pain of it. It is it, it does help, but only for so long. And then you wake up the next morning, you wake up and you have the worst headache. And then you're like, all comes down crashing again. You're like, was it worth it? You know, so it's like drinking, self-harm. Uh yeah. Okay. Nothing else. It's just been those. I have a very bad memory. Those are the things that I can remember. Okay. Yeah, but like. Um, also, wait. When you harm yourself, you're coping. Well, remember I said I I couldn't feel anything, and I wanted to feel something. Oh. So it was a a, a bad way of me wanting yeah. to get better. You know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It makes. Another thing is I am a very big believer in Christ. Um, I'm Christian. And one of the things that comfort me is actually praying, reading my Bible, and listening to like worship music. That calms me down. That's like the most effective one. That's like the one that works the most. Between the writing, between the breathing and the music. It's praying. Yeah, definitely praying. Okay. Um hey, I'm trying to I'm trying to think the pain is 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 the pain like uh deeper than the love that you get from 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 the people that that love you the family the friends the um, everywhere is it is the pain like deep 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 deeper than all the love when when it comes to feeling um, I would love to believe that. Well, I actually know that I'm a very, I'm very loved. The people around me love me so much. My friends from church, my my family, my parents. Um, that's actually a tricky question. But sometimes, when you go through a tough time you don't always voice it. You don't always say that you're going through a tough time. So you can be going through the most, but then the people around you don't know it. Okay. So you don't receive that love. 
okay. not that you don't receive that love but you don't get that comfort because the people don't know mm-hmm. so um yeah sometimes i just i just like act like i'm okay but i'm actually going through a tough time and then the people around me don't know they don't know to come in and give me a hug and say it's going to be okay because they don't know that i'm feeling like it's not going to be okay so yeah so isn't there a way where you can say that uh, you can signal them into like when you are not feeling well like isn't there a way that you can signal them that uh, i actually need a hug here i actually um, cuz if they do it every day then it's going to be like they are overcompensating for whatever that um has happened they are trying to be on guard yeah, yeah, yeah. so also if they don't do it at all you feel like things are good the way that they are so you should not share isn't there isn't there a way that you can like signal um the people because people care about you ne? yeah um and people love you yeah um and um i don't think anyone would be relieved with you being gone it's true yeah also i don't think that ever i don't know what you feel yeah and i think that whatever you feel it is not because of the people are not there yeah 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 it is just uh, something that haunts you alone yes, inside yes yes so but also whatever whatever you i don't know man because you saying if you never went there you would be gone yeah so i don't think i don't know how to say this yeah but i, I don't want you to to feel like you are left out with the world yeah i mean you're still young yeah yeah and can be, it does not have age yeah it does not um because sometimes someone is gonna say um i i i am depressed because i'm not working Okay. I am depressed because I'm not doing good at school. Okay. I am depressed because I have this pressure to perform a certain way which is not myself and this is overwhelming to me. Oh, so yeah. that's why they are depressed. Yeah. Now when you're young, I don't know um I don't know where these thoughts come from. You know? Ob- obviously I'm not a doctor. I'm not I'm not, I'm not qualified for yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I think to myself when I I I I listen to you say um whatever you feel mm. I've, i i i it kind of hurts it it, it 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 hurts me and i'm not even in the family i'm thinking the people that are in the family must be hurting more when um they they see that this uh, this is happening while you're still very very young and you still have a, a whole life ahead of you yeah um and um i don't know i don't know if I don't know if they could find a way. I don't I don't know if they could if 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 also the I don't know man, but I feel like I I would like you to signal. Um okay so um I I do actually now. Now back then I didn't. Now I do actually let the people know that I'm not doing okay or that I'm going through a rough time or like uh, on my on my instagram this morning i i was like i don't really feel like laughing today and i do and after that i went on to um share a scripture that had actually comforted me um but i am very open as hard as it is i do actually now let the people know around me that i am not having a good day today or it's been a tough week or i'm not feeling okay and they they do pull through for me like my mom just before i left she actually gave me a hug and she was like i'm proud of you and i was like thank you um but yeah i'm i'm i've learned to be open about it because um i do know that if i don't open up about it then it's only going to get worse and um yeah cuz remember at the beginning of this year i said it was a decision i had to make of opening up in which led to my admission Yeah. So yeah, I've actually learned to open up about, you know, my feelings. Um um people like we we when we experience such, we like to we 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 don't really um want to say or want to like tell the people around us cuz we don't want them to be like let down or like wonder what did they do wrong or like 
because it's it well for me personally it has nothing to do with anything that my family has done it all has to do with me i was the person that like kind of like put myself in the little bubble that i'm in right now of which i am working to get out of um but yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but i do have like um a special request to people that are actually going through like things that they may not feel like they understand um i just want um people to know that it's okay not to be okay um i want them to like like get help like open up like even if you feel like you shouldn't be even if you feel like you shouldn't be feeling the way that you're feeling like feeling like you you you're lost within yourself like Okay. Oh. Um just know that it's okay not to be okay. Um if, even if it's not your parent that you open up to because I know some some not all of us have the best relationships with our parents, but I do. Um like go to a trust like someone you trust or a loved one or a friend or someone. Tell them that you're not feeling okay and that you're feeling like you're hurting because i would rather listen to your problems than attend your fun- funeral you know which is the same thing that i'm i'm i want to say to you i know i know um i i am a mental health advocate after all because i know like i know what it's like to go through these things it's kind of like i'm not practicing what i'm preaching but at the same time i am because i am healing I am in the healing process. So, yeah. Okay. Um I don't know, man. Like this is uh, I feel like what the more we are aware with um the issues of mental health. Mm-hmm the more we are aware of uh depression i feel like uh, i don't know i don't know and i don't think this is a good thing to say but i feel like a lot of people sometimes might think that they are depressed even when they are not like what, what? i remember you said that you could be sad for a day okay and then that day could turn into two okay and then when it is a continuous it 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 goes on continuously then that means um you there's a problem that you need um assistance with okay so now i want to ask you is um if you don't drink the 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 the, the, the medication yeah what happens when you sleep oh um i can't really go to sleep without them <laughs> the sleeping ones i can't i can't i i I've done it like once and I literally stayed awake. I literally just saw light coming in and I was like, oh, it's morning. But um I struggle with insomnia like I can't sleep. Okay. So, yeah, I ju- I take sleeping meds to help me sleep. But with the anxiety ones, you can actually tell that I haven't taken my meds because I will be more like I'll be more shaky and more like 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 scared and paranoid and but it's not like I'm not saying medication is like like the the solution you know um yeah I I don't know prayer is also like kind of like something that like helps me a lot even though i don't take the 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 meds you know but the, i know i need to take the meds to help me feel better um like just before i came here, i actually took my anxiety pill cuz i was like mm. <laughs> i know i'm going to be shaky i'm not as shaky as i thought i was i was going to be but did yeah. you take the meds yesterday no i didn't <laughs> yeah cuz you cuz you were shaking when you were on 
You were shaking when you I actually did it. I needed to refill. We went to refill them today. Like, okay. get the prescription. They get, they get the, the new set of meds today. I got them. Um, yeah. So you're going, you're going to see the, the, thing, the, the therapist tomorrow? My psychologist tomorrow, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you, Isola, you brought your dad. I forgot and my we diary were, we were gonna, today. We're going to read mm-hmm. it here. I know. So that we can just uh, tap it maybe into the thoughts. Yeah, so yeah. Let's say someone is listening to or watching and maybe they want to... Know what type of thoughts I'm thinking. Yeah, to, to oh. know that when you're actually inside that hole, mm, what this is like. what's, what's yeah, happening yeah, to the... Yeah. Uh, I forgot my diary, but what I can think of... I remember I wrote in 2020, it was like, it went something like, life is like a roller coaster. It was at night. It was, that was before I took the sleeping meds. I only got the sleeping meds this year, after my, admi- before my admission. Um, so I would stay awake and I would either listen to worship music or write, or I would just cry, you know. Um, one of the things that I wrote though is, Life is like a roller coaster. Um, it's been ups and downs, and I feel like a burden. I I, I just remember that. Um, but what I realized is that as I was like, as the months were going by, I think it was when September twenty twenty, I had written like. It wasn't. It wasn't anything present. I was writing for my future self. And I was telling myself that it's going to be okay and that you are going to experience good days, good seasons are coming. And I was just motivating myself because I knew in that present moment that was what I was going to need to hear someday or like oh. some moment. Okay. So, yeah, I, I sometimes when I write down, I write down to my future self who might be feeling down and needing to hear um, something. Those, those yeah, words. yeah. Can't you just like um, in your room, like all those words that you wrote, mm. just place them in the wall so that uh, the reminders there. I actually yeah, have and also the family can also, you know, so that they can like I don't know. I feel like I feel like you need love, ne? As much as you you mm. have people well, that love you, ne? yeah. But I feel like you need that reassurance yeah. that this is what's happening. This is uh, obviously I'm not a I'm not yeah 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 but yeah. but from what from 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 what I'm getting I feel like for the people that love you and care about you yeah imagine you want to be a model imagine all all the things that you want to do yes, yes. imagine how you can shape the world if you fight yeah imagine how how. All the beautiful things that you have, the ideas that you have, yeah. If you if you fight and push through, mm-hmm. and they come full circle, imagine how it how it would look. Obviously, you're battling right now mm. with, with 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 everything, but imagine if you you didn't give in. Mm. Yeah. So, um, you said something around the lines. I need love and reassurance on like a daily basis. Yeah. Of which, um, I do get a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, also, as I mentioned, sorry, you guys are gonna he- hear a lot about God here, but he no, 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 he's played no the problem. part. Hey, um, we love God. I pray a lot, and yeah. every time I pray, it's like it's like you know when you're carrying something like heavy. Say like okay. I'm carrying this table. You feel the relief. It's like. When I pray after I said Amen, one make a lot of feeling pants among a tea. Bang at clans clank book with a meaning at it had you let a feeling, you know. Do you want to pray right now? <sighs> All right. Let's do it. Uh, do I close my eyes? Do you wanna close your eyes? No, it's not. I sometimes okay. pray with okay. my eyes open. I talk to God like all the time, so I there's not a specific way to pray. You don't have to close your eyes. Okay. 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 Oh, Heavenly Father, we come before you. We enter your gates with thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus Christ, that I've made it this far. Thank you, Lord, that we are here right now. Um, thank you, Lord, that I could share my experience um, for your glory, Lord. 
Um, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you've carried me through this heavy week, Lord. Lord, I pray that you could help this, me sharing this, be um, able to help other people to get the help that they need. Um, I pray that it would be an inspiration or motivation for someone else to do something that they've been wanting to do or to get up from um, a dog hole, Lord. Um, Lord, um, I pray that you would please um, be with your people. When Elijah said, Lord, I want to die, you gave him strength to live. Depression is real, but so are you. Anxiety is hope is, is real, but so is hope. Um, Lord, you promised in Jeremiah twenty nine verse eleven that you know the plan. You you know the plan and the purpose that you have for us. A plan not to harm us, but a plan to give us a purpose and a future. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would be with your people today, walk with them, and give them strength. Replace depression and anxiety with your peace, love, and comfort. Um, thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, I think I think we, we I think we've shared enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we've shared enough. As much as um, as much as it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want you to say the last words to your future self so that every time you watch this, what Ooh. is it that you like? Um, I would like to hear. You to hear. Whoa. <sighs> wow. <laughs> um, do your future me, um, I would like you to know of how proud I am of you for making it this far. Um, ah, damn. Oh, my word. Ah, damn. Okay, 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 okay. No, Let's it's fine. It gangsta. <laughs> oh. It's fine. It's fine. Like, it's fine. If um... I want you to know that um, things are going to work out. I want you to know that God is working and trust his process and his timing. I want you to know that you are loved by your friends and your family. Um, I also want you to know that... I also want you to thank you for not giving up um, when life got hard. Um, the fact that you're going to experience one day being able to touch someone else's life with your story through either what you love, which is dancing, modeling, nursing, teaching. You're doing a great job and I'm proud of you. Yeah. We're done, <sighs> Um, yeah. What what happens when you when you cry? Like, do you feel better after? Yeah, definitely. It's like you know when you have that throat in your bubble that you've been holding. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then plus a puma, like when when it like yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That helps. That helps. Okay. Um, oh, wait, okay. can I quickly share? Share, share. This share. is so important. Sure. Well, okay. First of all, all credits to God, right? Okay. He's been he's been literally. Yeah. God has been working. God has been great. Um, he's still gonna continue to do that. Um, thank you to my family for supporting me, for having my back. Also, my fin my family and friends. Also, um, there's there's creators out there that I look up to, which is um, one of them is Ukugule Tunantumba. She's she's been through it, um, and I relate to her so much. She actually has her own podcast and. Um, yeah, and Sive, Sive Mlilana has carried me through tough times. Um, thank you so much for that. Literally wouldn't have made it without you. My Uncle Coco, everyone, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Love is real. 
Um, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> One last <Yeah>. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's okay not to be okay. Yeah. Um, find a thing that works for you. Find something that, that, that makes you happy and stick to it because at the end of the day, um, we want you alive. We want you here because you are going to make a difference and you are making a difference in someone else's life even though you don't know it. Um, can, I, can I quickly share advice? Whatever you want <laughs> to say, this is your, this is, this is. I, I'm, I'm not a, prof- I'm no like professional or anything, but from my experience, what I'd love to share with people that are going through a tough time right now is try not to, try not to, allow yourself to sit in that negative bubble go outside go for a walk drink water open those curtains take a shower and yet again feel the feelings that need to be felt but don't let them consume you and last thing is i believe in you 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 you're gonna be like guys I, I really believe in like motivating people and pushing people and just letting people know that they are worth it. So I want you to know that today, whoever's watching this, you're worth it. You're doing a great job. You are important. And yeah. Peace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, this has been the Nightfall Podcast, man. Um, episode 15. My name is Tamago Nikosani, and we are out. This podcast has been proudly brought to you by Electronic Solutions, recorded at the Block Studios. And if you want to use our facilities, get in touch with us on all our social media platforms, Electronic Solutions. Email us at mean at electronicsol.com.